I just want to say it before I answer the question that I know how to tweet and I can make a plane reservation on my phone and I can load my boarding pass to my phone. When it comes to writing, however, I do use um, a legal pad, a yellow legal pad, and a mechanical pencil because that seems to be um, the only way I know how to do it. And I like most to write, it isn't always possible, but I like most to write at a large desk because the biographer famously has a lot of material um, at hand and so you're, you're, you're living amidst clutter. A large desk in front of a window with some kind of light um, and ideally in the morning since um, you know, those are the best espresso hours after all. And I'm pretty much good from the minute I can get into my office until lunch, which I put off as long as I humanly can. Um, Lampedusa for the Leopard, um, Shirley Hazard, The Transit of Venus, um, a whole pile of memoir and autobiography, um, probably because as V.S. Pritchett put it, the suspense with memoir is seeing how much the memoirist will reveal. Um, Pritchett's autobiography actually would be on the list. Um, the Duke of Deception, um, Moss Hart's Act One. There's a real, there's a huge pile, I'd say, a stack of those. Something about getting at the inner life is endlessly appealing to me. I think it's really important not to fall in love with your subject, but um, there has to be a certain um, sneaking admiration, if not full scale admiration, um, which at the same time you want to keep off your page as much as possible, but if you're going to spend four or five or ten years with this subject, um, there needs to be something alluring or something attractive throughout most of the enterprise. There's a, a famous um, sort of emotional arc with biographers where there's a period usually where, where you fall, where you become very disenchanted with your subject. Um, they either do something you heartily disapprove of or they misbehave or maybe they just overstay their welcome. But um, for the most part, I think you mean to admire this person in some way. My favorite word, especially since I'm just coming back from author tour, is surely espresso. Um, espresso, snow day, um, boeuf bourguignon, that's not really an English language word, I'm not sure that matters. Um, rapscallion is a really good word. It's always tatterdemalion, I wonder if they're related. Um, I would say the least favorite words in the English language right now would be the espresso machine is not working. Um, or any of those words that tend to come up in meetings. Have you noticed this? I will now liaise with you um, while we evaluate how this will impact um, the tasking of the people at hand. I mean, all of those words which are used transitively in some new and bizarre capacity. I grew up in a, in a house with a lot of books with which I had a love-hate affair, as one will when one's parents are always throwing books at one. So there were long spells where I would do nothing but read under the, under the catch in the living room, and long spells where I rejected reading altogether. And I think it wasn't until college where I realized that the alternative to going to class was that you could stay in your room and read, um, that I became a, a truly committed and, and sort of obsessive reader. I always felt more comfortable um, on the page than I do in person, which I don't know, is a pathological mark of a writer or just of a shy person, but somewhere in between. I'm at work on a new book, which is not biography, but history this time, and it's about the Salem witch trials. Um, the beauty of it is that unlike Cleopatra, there are actually documents. And every time I look at this crabbed, old New England handwriting with this incredibly eccentric spelling um, and my eyes are beginning to cross, I just think to myself, yes, it's horrible, but there are documents, so it's, it's really thrilling. <laughs>